Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And may it be your greatest, most treasured gift, and may you spend much time reading and studying His Holy Word. Well, friends, today is January the 24th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, as you can probably hear, I'm still not feeling at my best, but we're not going to allow that to stop us. For the Lord has a word for us this morning, and we're going to take that, continuing in our study from the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. When we were last together, we had discussed how... We are one body. We serve one Lord. We have come through one faith. We have experienced one baptism. And for this reason, we should endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, so that we would walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we have been called. And Paul's going to explain how we do this, picking up in verse 11. He says, see, because you are a one body, each of you have been given gifts. And your gift is not there to present or to serve yourself. Your gift is there to serve others. And so to some of us, he has made us apostles. Now, of course, we know that an apostle was one who was sent directly by the Lord Jesus and so regardless of what one would call themselves today, the true apostles of Jesus died some 2,000 years ago. He says some of you are prophets. Some of you have been given the anointing to speak on behalf of God, to speak the words of God. Some of you are evangelists. You're focused upon not necessarily the discipleship of the believer, but your mission, your call, your anointing is to bring people into the kingdom. So your message is the Lord Jesus and him crucified. But we know once people come into the kingdom, they need to be discipled. They can't stand upon the message of Jesus alone and him crucified, for there is much to learn and much that we will learn as we progress in our journey, and that's where discipleship takes place. But some of you have been given the mission simply to preach Jesus and him crucified and bring people into the kingdom. Some of you are pastors. Some of you have the love, the patience, the dedication, the wisdom that is needed to be applied in helping others become the best followers of the Lord Jesus that they can become. And then some of you are teachers. Some of you are those who will disciple others and teach them all that being a follower of the Lord Jesus entails. And we do this, each of these gifts are given to each and every one of us, each of these callings are given to each and every one of us for the perfecting of the saints so that the body, the one body, will grow up in Jesus and mature, produce much fruit. And this is done for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we will do this until we all come in the unity, in the oneness of the faith and in the unity and the oneness of the knowledge of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as each of us grow individually, we are perfecting the one body, the one man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, until we become the express image of the Lord Jesus himself, that we henceforth be no more children, acting like children, behaving like children, but we put away childish things, we stop being tossed to and fro, we become firm in what we believe, and we know why we believe what we believe, and we do this through the study, the meditation, and the reading of God's word from Genesis to Revelation, 
we're no longer carried about with every wind of doctrine. Every time someone stands up and decides that they want to speak for the Lord, we don't just take for granted what they're saying, but we judge what they say according to the word of God. And we're very cautious in being alert to the fact that there are going to be wolves in sheep's clothing and they are going to be among us. And we are going to judge them based upon their fruit, not based upon their gifts, not based upon their talents, not based upon any outward manifestation or claims that they make of themselves, but we're going to judge them based upon their fruit. And so when you see someone who calls themselves a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hold them to a high standard because your expectation should be they live what they claim. And we're going to be very careful in not allowing the slight of men, the fraud of men, the cunningness of men through their cunning craftiness where they are lying in wait to deceive others so that they can cater to their own lifestyles, that they can fill their own evil bellies by taking advantage of of others who are less skilled in the word, in the obedience, and in their understanding of the Lord Jesus and the relationship that they have with him. And so we are to speak the truth of God's word in love. We are to warn others of these deceitful men, but we're to do it in love, not in attacking them, but simply comparing their message to what the word of God says. And this is how we grow up in Jesus in all things. And each of us as individuals come together to make up one body that is fitly joined together. But this body isn't made upon simple confession. It's made upon obedience. And so the Lord God does have a remnant in the earth that comprise his body. But the majority of those who claim to know him know him not at all, and are not part of that body. They're like a virus that is attacking the body, and the true living cells of the body are attacking those viruses, defending the body against those viruses to ward off any spiritual diseases that could move in and become a part of the body. The Bible tells us that a little leaven destroys the whole lump. And that's why we have to be so careful and hold others to such a high standard when they claim to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. And when they contradict the Bible through their lifestyle, through their teaching, through their beliefs, we correct them with much love through by what the Word of God actually teaches. And if we, the body of the living Lord Jesus Christ, did, did this effectively, persistently and adequately, we would put an end overnight to all the false teachers, all the false preachers that are in the world. TV evangelists would disappear overnight. TBN, God TV, and other such networks would go bankrupt overnight. But unfortunately, we live in a world where no one is holding anyone accountable anymore. No one is holding anyone to the standard of the high truth of the word of God. And that's so unfortunate. And it may be that we couldn't reach them anyway, no matter how many opportunities we had or how effective we thought our message was. But what we can do is we can rule our own bodies. We can govern our own emotions. We can neglect and turn off turn away from many of the things that this world has to offer where we're wasting our time and we can get into the word of God, read the word of God, study the word of God and conform our lives to the word of God. That we can do. We can beat our bodies into subjection like the Bible tells us. We can examine our hearts very closely and we can be sure, very sure that we are fitting ourselves for the family of God, for the kingdom of God to come. And then on that rare occasion where we do have opportunity to speak in love the truth to someone who is being misled or maybe is intentionally misleading others, 
We can feel confident that the Holy Spirit will speak his word through us, which we have been studying and reading and meditating upon, and it will be God that will be speaking and not us, not our opinions, but will speak on behalf of God to all that will listen. And so what I'd like to leave you with today, friend, is what has the Lord given you that you should be using among the body to edify the body, to help the body grow up more maturely in the person of Jesus, becoming the express image of the Lord Jesus. And whatever that is he has given you, are you using it for his glory? Well, we're going to close there today, friends, and we'll pick up next time, beginning at verse 17 of chapter 4. Until we meet again, I pray the Lord Jesus will bless your journey, that you will be quickened in your spirit by his Holy Spirit, that your eyes will be enlightened to new truth, and that your hands will be busy in caring for and serving others. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.